One, two, three, four. Hello, my name is Diego from the Hit Music Studio, and in this video, I would love to help you play the song Kiss Me More by Doja Cat. And let me tell you, we are a South Florida music school, and we do these tutorials to help our students so they can have a little bit of an extra help at home. And if you are not one of our students, we still like to share some of this content because part of what I like to do is give you some tips into how to practice it. I'm sure you're going to find tons of tutorials out there, but these are more ideas how you can actually practice it because uh, it's not a, about knowing what the notes are. It's about actually being able to play it and playing hopefully with the recording. So let's go there to a close-up of the piano. I can give you some ideas. Now, the first thing that I want to mention is that I'm using a guitar sound. So <coughs> the keyboard that I have sounds fairly good as a guitar. If you don't have a guitar ha a guitar sound that sounds good on your keyboard, it's okay. I would try to just match it with maybe a, a good sound on your keyboard, including maybe a piano sound. I think this pattern in itself sounds good on multiple instruments. So now I only, I, I also have, a, I'm using a sustain pedal, so I can move around my hands and get the notes to be very connected. And at the same time, and I can show you here with a different uh, screen in which you can see how my, uh, this is the vibrato wheel. I have it a little bit up, giving it a little bit of a vibrato uh, touch to it, a little bit of an effect. So that's important because that way, when I play it, it really sounds a lot more like the song. So uh, for here, it's very important to play the notes very even. I'm gonna talk, especially I would say, start with the, just the right hand, play the right hand, practice the right hand, then try to do it with the recording. Uh, it's important to do this. You're going to do finger one on D flat, finger four on A flat. And the reason that we're doing it that way is because you want strong fingers on this one because you're playing this at a fairly high speed and you want to do this very evenly. Now on this one, I was telling my students, maybe think of pairs of two notes and count those pairs. So of course, this will be one pair, two notes, one, two. So that is five times two pair, two notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two. So that's a total of 10 notes. Now, after that, we're gonna do D flat and G for a total of three times. So three times. Then we're gonna change to three times C and G. And then three times C and F. Now, one thing that is important with this, I will make sure that you're not doing uh, nine notes instead of 10, because that's when it can get very confusing. So I will practice very, very slow. Ideally, you wanna probably put a metronome on and do something like this, and maybe just practice just the right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So it's very important to practice it. I would say uh, you want to definitely practice it very evenly and not let the notes to, to sound a little bit like ones are going faster than the others. So there, uh, once you can do that, I would say one more little detail that I like to mention is when you play this chord, which is not a particularly easy chord depending on your uh, age. So D flat, F and C, and then C, A, E flat and B flat. And when you play that, make sure that they're short. So the, the song has a little bit of a change there into how that's supposed to sound. And I think it's very interesting to do this. You're coming from doing C, F, and this is a big jump because you have to release your hand and move to this. And I will practice maybe just that. Do C, F, and then D flat, F, and C. And get comfortable with that. I would say that's probably the hardest thing of the whole thing, of the whole song. You know, the whole pattern, so make sure that you can get good at that so you can do the next chord. And I think it's very normal too, if you have never really played chords that are that spread out, maybe just practice those two. So this one and this one, get your hand familiar playing with the, both, the two of them. So it is very normal and I see a lot with my students, they don't really practice 
repeating more times something that is hard. And I think it's very, very important to put more energy on the hard parts. So let's talk a little bit about the left hand, a couple of pointers there so you can also play it. So finger four on B flat, then we're gonna do E flat, another E flat, but in this case is with the pinky, and then finger probably four, so you can do A flat, and then we're gonna go D flat with finger two, and we have D flat and C. The left hand is not super complicated, but uh, one thing about it is that it's syncopated. So that means that if I'm playing eight notes on my right hand, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When I play that eighth one, I'm gonna be doing the E flat. So it sounds like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. So that's important to count it and make sure that you do it correctly. I really uh, believe in practicing and counting at the same time. It takes a lot more energy, but I can tell you this, once you start counting, it's very easy to know if you're doing it right or wrong. And it is more work to do it that, but you are, every time that you get it right, you're moving towards being able to actually be able to play it successfully with the song. So we have some people and some students that almost like to wing it and, no, oh, I kind of like got it, let me try it. And it's almost like if you just wing it, chances are something like this may come out incorrectly. So I'll play it pretty slow so you can have an idea. Uh, a lot of them are syncopated for the left hand. So this will be the first, I guess, uh, two bars. <laughs> So there, as you can see, I'm, I'm doing both. I would say try to do this. It's on the up notes. So it's almost on the second note that I'm playing that a, a flat. And then I play it with a G. And then I go the something very similar because it's going to be C and G with A flat. So what's important, I think, to me when I think of practicing these things is which ones go together. Because even if I'm going slow, okay, these two push together. So I try to think of them as a, as a block. And I think it's important to practice that way. So once you get it, uh, practice it very slowly. I would say it's a good idea to just do with the right hand, play with the song. Uh, another great thing that I, I would like to add is take the song, the original song, slow it down you know, on the playback settings on YouTube, and make sure that you practice with it slowly, hands separate. Uh, that is a great way to get the feel of the song. Once you can do it, then try to maybe speed it up uh, one hand at a time. And then once that's there, try to do it with two hands. But I think that's always a great step so you are able to play it. So with that, I think uh, that's the main tips that we have for this one. So you guys are successful at playing it. I really, th really think it's a cool pattern. It's some Someone knew a little bit of what they're doing because the, the chords that are there uh, have a couple more elements to it than just basic uh, major or minor chords. But cool song, cool pattern. I uh, really hope that you are able to play it. Uh, remember that if you would like to take lessons with me or with anyone else here at The Hit, you can check our main website, thehitmusicstudio.com. We also have free uh, online courses, uh, including one that is designed specifically for beginners. You can check our store in, the, in the, our main website, or you can also check the description of this video for a link for that. But we want to thank you for watching. If you would like to see me cover any other songs that you would like to see a tutorial, let me know in the comments. And thanks again. We'll see you guys uh, on the next one. Take care.